Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cinecool, and this is Gems of War. And today I have your weekly event preview for the week of November 8th, 2021. So what we're going to do is take a look at the Soul Forge, then the World Event world event uh, scoring and world event team, and then we'll get into the whole everything else. We'll do the good stuff up at the front for everybody. So let's go, baby. How'd y'all do on the vault? What was what's the final verdict on that, huh? I think I got, like, at least 250 vault keys, like, almost 20 epic vault keys. It was decent. I didn't play it all Saturday, though, or else I could have had at least 300. But, uh, let's take a look at the Soul Forge this week. Before we get into all the new stuff, let's see what's in the Soul Forge. Uh, what kind of mythics I can recommend, what kind of order I can put them in. Uh, let's see here. We have the Arch Dookie. Iron Hawk, baby! Faceless one! There you go, buddy! There's the Iron Hawk. You gotta get that. Hopefully you saved up 8,000, but hey... 4,000 is a good start there. One of the best mythics in the game. Uh, what else do we have here? Shade of Zorn, one of the worst. We still have Arachnid Weaver, that's crazy. And what else? Elamagrim. Alright, so if I had to put these in some sort of order, Arachnid Weaver is still number one because it's only 2,000 diamonds. So even above Ironhawk, just because it's so cheap and it's still here, and if you still don't have it, I would get this first, just because it's so cheap. Um, it's a top 5, top 7 mythic that is only 2,000 diamonds, so you can't beat that, really. Um, second place would definitely have to go to Ironhawk, though. Uh, come to prominence this year as the best vault key farming troop in the game. Unfortunately, it had to come in the, the, the day after the vault event, of course. Of course. But uh, here it is uh, for the next vault event. Hopefully you can get two of them. Because uh, that's what that's the best way to farm Vault Keys and Gnomes and Nomapalooza in the game is uh, Iron Hawk here. Uh, 25 blue, brown, yellow, Adana, Construct, Mech. Uh, create 12 Doom Skulls and explode 18 gems. People making teams with that is just, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. That's not the main use of Iron Hawk. It's not his spell. It is artillery support. Deal 5 damage to all enemies when an ally casts a spell. So you put two of them on a team with an empowered caster that can cast before the enemy does anything, like Greed or Sister Superior or whatever, with a, um, a des uh, Dust Devil. So you'll cast your Greed or your Sister Superior that's empowered, right? It'll throw off this, this 10 damage here. Since you have two of them, it deals 5 damage to all enemies. Well, it'll deal 10 damage to all enemies. Then you'll cast your Empowered Dust Devil, which deals 5 to all enemies. And then you'll do that again, so 10 more on top of that. So you're dealing 25 damage to all enemies before they can do anything. Um, and if you do Explore Difficulty 1 in the right place, like uh, Wild Plains or Cinema Mirage or Black Hawk over in that little corner... Uh, you can wipe them all in one turn, and it's the fastest team in the game for uh, Vault Keys especially. And, okay, what else do we got? So the Archduke, Shade of Zorn, and Elamagrim. I'd probably say Elamagrim would be the second best here. Uh, 25 red, a purple, brown, dragon's call, daemon, dragon, deal damage to all enemies, create 9 purple gems boosted by burning enemies. You can make a team that loops with this. Uh, get somebody that burns all enemies, maybe the new Mythic or Infernus or Zulgoth or something like that. And you can maybe loop the purple if you find a way. Maybe another troop that makes a bunch of purple as well. Um, pretty pretty good. You can make... It used to loop better, and I don't know what they did to it. I think they nerfed it at some point, or they nerfed something that went along with it or something. And it, 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 it used to be really awesome, and it could loop, like... Mother of Darkness type of looping, or King Gobtruffle, but these days it doesn't quite do that. But it's still a fun dragon, one of the funnest dragons in the game. Uh, that'd probably be second best, but it's not top 20 or anything. Definitely get Arachnid Weaver and two Ironhawks before you even think about Elma Grimm. Um, next would be probably uh, the Archdukey. Um, 25 red, uh, blue, uh, brown, Blighted Lands, Daemon, deal, damage to an enemy, there's a percentage chance, equal to my magic, to destroy them, if they die, summon a Lemur, and then, no good traits. Yeah, he's, uh, below average, he's not the greatest, but you could make a, t you could still do something with him, he's, he's not terrible, he's just below average, I would say. Shade of Zorn, one of the worst in the game. If you want to check out the other worst mythics in the game, I will link that video at the end of this video. 
Uh, I'll put my top three worst mythics in the game video at the end if you want to check that out and see what the other two are. Plus, there's three honorable mentions, so there's really the top six worth, worst mythics in the game video. I'll link it at the end of this video here. 24 red, blue, purple, Groshnok, undead, orc, deal damage to an enemy, boosted by red allies and skulls. If the enemy dies, summon two fists of Zorn. Nothing. Stealthy's okay. Alright, what kind of legendaries do we got here? Anything good? Um, let's see. 800. We got Basilisk. Sir Quentin Hadley. Celestasia. And Karnex. Those are all uh, average or above average. They're all decent. Like, But you know how legendaries go. You don't want to craft a legendary when you could save up for a mythic. You can get legendaries other ways. It's not as hard to get a legendary as it is to get a mythic. So there's legendaries in the underworld you could get instead. Stuff like that. Like, But I would say probably Sir Quentin Hadley's the best here. Just because he's the most useful. 18 brown, yellow, sword's edge, knight, beast. Convert purple gems to yellow and green gems to skulls. Deal damage to two random enemies. The main thing, though, is he starts knights at 50% mana. So I think that's um, guard's avatar. So you can make a nice little uh, quick clear team whenever, you know. So he's not bad. He's useful for sure. I don't know if he's a top 10, but he's up there, top 20. And 50% start legendaries are always worth having. Um, next would be, I don't know, it's close. These all, these all have kind of, kind of uses here. It'd probably be maybe Carnex, actually. They're pretty close, though. I'd say Carnex and, uh, Basilisk are pretty close. 15 red, purple, Adana, mech, create five skulls, then explode ten skulls, gain 52 armor. Uh, that's not the greatest, but spiked armor, impervious armored, it's kind of a decent tank. Um, Celestasia, gain barrier on four or five gem matches, create nine gems of a chosen ally's mana color cleanse and give them 34 life. And Basilisk, 17 blue brown uh, monster beast from Mist of Scales, deal true damage to an enemy if the enemy is poisoned, deal double damage, then deal 27 true damage again if they are stunned, deal double damage. Uh, stun a random enemy when matching brown gems. It's okay. They're all okay. Sir Quentin had at least the best of the bunch, though. Out of the legendaries. Weapons! I'm hoping that Rage Reaver is here. So you guys can get on that ferocity gang. Alright. Trick and Treat still here. Wild Cleaver. Horn Cleaver. Staff of the Wild. Doomed Maul. Primal Axe. There it is. So Rage Reaver. I would not leave this week without Rage Reaver. Um, it's not as important as like uh, Arachnian Weaver or um, Iron Hawk. But it's definitely up there. Especially how much it costs. You know. So if I had to go, I would probably say get your Arachnian Weaver if you don't have it. Then get a Rage Reaver because it's only 300. And then go for that Iron Hawk. Unless you're like so close that you, I don't know, Iron Hawk's probably more important. But Rage Reaver, it's going to be like a year before it comes back through. So if you don't get it now, like Iron Hawk will come through again before Rage Reaver will. And it's only 300, so. Anyway, deal. Splash damage to an enemy. Create four red gems boosted by Taurus allies. Now what you do here is you put three ferocities and make yourself a shaman, and that makes like 16 red or 20 red or something crazy. It's nice, and uh, it doesn't use red. It uses brown and blue, and it just makes a ton of red for your ferocities that builds their stats up, that gives them mana, that lets them hit harder, gets gets them f uh, f uh, filled up and everything with their spell damage, with their uh, mana. Uh, wild Cleaver, explode green gems, grant a random sass effect to a, all Wild Plains allies, and summon a Wild Plains troop. That's like a good backup to Rage Reaver there for your uh, ferocity team. Uh, Horn Cleaver, deal damage to an enemy, boosted by Taurus allies. Create a mix of six green and brown gems for each Taurus ally. Not bad. Staff of the Wild, remove all brown gems, deal 38 damage to an enemy, boosted by gems removed. The enemies from Wild Plains deal double damage. Not great. Doomed Maul, one of the crappy doomed weapons. Not even first or second brown weapon you should get. Or red, I mean. Sorry, it looks brown. Primal Axe, deal damage to an enemy boosted by Wild Plains allies and create a mix of green and red gems for each Wild Plains ally. Not terrible. Rage Reaver's the best. And, yeah. That's it for the Soul Forge. So I would say Arachnian Weaver, then Iron Hawk, then Rage Reaver. But, you know, it depends how many diamonds you have. If you don't have enough for Iron Hawk, definitely get that Rage Reaver. And, uh... Put it on your ferocity team. Now there's no excuses. Only 300 diamonds and we just had the vault. So I don't see how you could not have it, you know? 
Anyway, let's uh, keep this moving here. Let's go to the world event. I'll tell you the scoring for the world event. Storm Chaser Song. Loading. All right, Storm Chaser told us that something had thrown the elements out of balance. He was struggling to control them, so he offered to help his tribe fight. Fight elementals and collect wild energy to help Storm Chaser. Uh, the medal is 160% skull and spell damage for all troops in the current event. So most likely you're going to do spell damage uh, hitting all enemies, but you could make a skull team. It's nice and versatile. Uh, let's collect this. Come on, man. There we go. Orb of Clans. Badge of Songs. I'm going to buy up until I get a medal, then we'll, I'll tell you the scoring here in a second. Come on now. Come on, game. Let's go. Let's get a medal so I can show this team. Come on now. Come on, loading. Loading. This whole weekend, degraded performance. They just, they suck, man. The Vault Event. Degraded performance. Then they put Ironhawk in the Soul Forge right after the Vault Event's over. Little shysters. Alright, let's see here. The scoring for the World Event. Ah. Mistralis. Mistralis is 16 wild energy. So that's the one worth the most. Frostfeather and Ursuvius are both wor worth 12 wild energy. Rock Troll and Dark Troll and Swamp Lash are all worth 8 wild energy. So that's pretty easy, right? Mistralis is worth the most. Then Frostfeather and Ursuvius. Then the Trolls and Swamp Lash are all worth the same. So sounds pretty easy this week. So here we have Frostfeather and Swamp Lash. Uh, so Frostfeather's worth more, worth more. So it's probably rarity order. It's probably super easy here. Let's make a team. Um, let's put it in base rarity. And I'll see what we got to work with here this week. Alright, what's the restriction? We got Wild Plains. Is that it? Wild Plains. So it just has to be a troop from Wild Plains. Okay. Um, I, I can see a bunch of people using Lord of Slaughter, of course. He does a bunch of skulls. So Lord of Slaughter would not be a bad choice this week. Catchers would be a great choice. Splash damage. Um, no. Maybe if you're like really... Maybe. Maybe. No. Well, maybe. Um. What do we got here? Uh, Horn Guardian, Savage Hunter, Midge Swarm. You could use Midge Swarm if you're really low level. You could do like a bunch of Midge Swarms. Uh, with a weapon or something. But uh, I think I would go with Catcher's the Bull here. Probably. Lord of Slaughter would be fun, but uh, I think Ketris would be the safer way to go. And then we need mana generation, or we need some way to boost his attack, life, and armor. So mana generation or attack, life, and armor. We have to use Wild Plains weapons. Mana generation. So we got green and brown. That's nice. Um, or we got green and red. Rage Reavers here. Can make a ton of red. And it does splash damage. That could help. And it uses blue and brown. Hmm. Probably I would use Rage Reaver. I just like Rage Reaver. It makes so much red. For Taurus allies. So we make ourselves a Shaman. Let's go equip that. Level 90 Shaman. And you'd want to do... I do Bloodthirsty, Wall of Vines, I guess. Depends on... Yeah, I guess, yeah. Leaf Storm, Axe of Doom. Well, we could do Root Trap there. Or you could do Brilliant Aura. Counterattack, Ferocity. Alright, now we need another Mana Generator or somebody that's going to boost our our stats um festival cow savage hunter soothsayer horned guardian no do we have any empowered troops here let's look that up first 
Empowered. We got Soothsayer. Choose a purple gem and destroy its row and column, then give one to all skills on all other allies. Hmm. Maybe. Clear filter. Um. Who else? Who else? What's Earth Caller? No. Sunweaver, maybe? Give 36 attack, armor, and life to an ally, then give 6 mana to them. You could do that to one of your, uh... And it's using yellow and blue, which we, we don't use yellow yet. I would say either Sunweaver or... Or Soothsayer. I think I'm gonna go Sunweaver. We're gonna have potions and everything. It's gonna be fine. And... Rage Weaver at the top. Sunweaver at the bottom. Probably. Alright. It's just my first idea. I do Teams Tuesday tomorrow, so look out for that. Um, we'll probably do a brown. Double brown. We could do blue. That way, that way we can get our mana generators up. It looks like a good banner there. A Kraken banner. Um, but we could do a double red, double green, minus purple. I think I might go with this, though. All right, so my first thought team is Rage Reaver, Catchers the Bull, Catchers the Bull, Sun Weaver. Let's try it out. And we're going to put on our Medal of Songs, and then we want to boost up our... Probably do that. Boost up our Catchers. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, we start all... We get to start all of our allies with 50% mana because we're a Shaman. Forgot about that. So that's cool. Awesome, look at that. They're all up. So you hit two. And then we're going to hit four. Get out of here. To reiterate, Mistralis is worth 16 wild energy. That's worth the most. Then Frostfeather and Ursuvius are both worth 12. Then everybody else is worth 8. Should be pretty simple. We got Frostfeather and Ursuvius. So one of those two. Probably whatever one's the higher level would be the safest way to go. We'll do, like, two or three more battles. I don't want to go too crazy here. We got to do the rest of the weekly preview. Um, let's see. I probably just need, uh, doesn't really matter. Let's do that. Do that. And do that. Get all that lovely red. Boom, 12 wild energy. Frost feather, 23. Let's go. We'll do this and one more, then we'll be moving along to the rest of the weekly preview. Got your team, I got your scoring, and I got your Soul Forge all in the front of the video. Okay, so... Big old green. Might as well do that, right? And then do this. And we win. So yeah, I could see somebody using a Lord of Slaughter team. I could see Ketris. And I could see a very low-level person doing maybe Midge Swarm. Like three Midge Swarms with one of those weapons. One that makes hopefully green or for Wild Plains or whatever. Um, let's go this. Okay, and we'll cast this on uh, this. And see you later. But yeah, that'd be my first idea. I think it would work... All the way. I don't know. You might be able to tweak it a little bit. There's Mr. Alice. We'd definitely pick her next. But, uh, yeah. That is the world event. Alright, let's get back into this weekly preview. We're gonna start it back at the beginning like I normally do. We got Perfect Storm. New epic troop. Storm Chaser. Get this troop with glory from the rewards tab of the shop. Storm Chaser song. Experience our new world event with your guildmates. Play world event battles every day to unlock rewards. Talisman of Wild Magic is still going on. New Mythic Troop Flaming Oni is still in there from uh, until Friday at reset. It's pretty good. It's decent. It's like a utility troop. It's nothing that you're going to build a team around, but you can throw it on the end of some other teams. I've been throwing it on the end of a Zul'goth uh, Fireblade team. Uh, the 6.0 update finally came to PlayStation, so we're good on that. I don't have to worry about that. Uh, events, we have Week of Mystics, all Mystics gain 10% to their skills, and Week of Taurus, all Taurus gain 10% to their skills, and Bonus Souls, use Storm Chaser and PvP and Explore to gain 40 souls. Alright. 
Only 21 subscribers to go. Can you guys get me to 5K this week? I'd really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, let us check out the glory shop. Got spoils of war. You want to get this every time, no matter what level you are. It's worth it. 10 event keys for 1800 glory. And we have Storm Chaser. 13 yellow, green, wild plains, Taurus, mystic. Destroy one row for each elemental enemy. Then deal 44 scatter damage. Sounds too situational to be good. Summon a firestorm at the start of battle. Let's get our dude up to mythic. What? Why does it still say epic? Doesn't it usually tell you like how many you need? What's up with that? Oh, there it is. I'm an idiot. 6,400. And we're getting Arcane Light Trade Stones. You get two of them per time, so those are yellow and green. So we'll go check those out. Um, yellow, green stones. Also, Wild Plains Troops for the event key. So let's check out those green, yellow troops. See what we can uh, fully trade by buying up in the glory shop. Base rarity, yes. Alright, so troops such as Aquaticus, Tsunami, Arachnian Weaver, Creeping Doom, um, what else? King Bloodwood has Bloody Bowels, the grossest sounding trait in the game. Um, Queen Aurora's got Rainbow Link, Quilt Zama, Eternal Dawn. Alright, we're getting into the ones that definitely use this stone. 50% start for Beast, 50% start for Human. Uh, random gem, that's not bad. Werestag, Lycanthropy, Sigoro, nothing. Urskula, 50% start for Urska. Child of Summer, Empowered. Um, Frostfire Troll, nah. Tulieo is nice, but you really don't need her traits. Anybody else? I don't know, it's a solid stone. The one thing that it's not great about it is that most people probably did the Warrens for super long back in the day, and they have so many of these stones. It's kind of like the new Wild Plains stone, or the old Wild Plains stone. So you probably just have a ton of these, and you don't really need to buy them up. But hey, if you're newer in the game, you could definitely use those 50% starts. Human, Beast, and uh, Empowered Child of Summer for your Lake Queen Titania, and Urska. Anyway, let's check out the Wild Plains troops now. The ones you can get for throwing event keys this week. Alright, we're going to go to Wild Plains. Let's uh, show all, just in case. I'm pretty sure I have all Mythics. but uh... So, this is one of the better uh, Mythics um, you could get for throwing event keys. I mean, there's two useful ones, two top ten Mythics. So, the only thing is, if you miss, you're going to get crap. But the, the, the ceiling is super high, but the floor is kind of super low. But it might be worth going, throwing a bunch of event keys, especially after that vault event where you probably got a bunch, to get either Ketris or the Lord of Slaughter. If you get the Mythic, you get you get a good one. Um, but your Consolation Prizes are pretty terrible. Um, nothing else really worth getting other than, like, Sunweaver. So if you miss, it's kind of stinky. But if you get it, if you get a Mythic, you get a good one, a top 10. So definitely, like, a B... B tier type of place just because the the constellations are pretty terrible but the mythics are really good so probably like a b tier type of event key maybe b plus okay what do we do after that we take a look at all the stuff that's going on this week we have uh today of course the world event scholar spell damage i'd recommend ketris lord of slaughter or midge swarm for that um, then tomorrow, Tuesday, we have, uh, the Labyrinth, I'm pretty sure, right? So the Labyrinth, I'll show you a team for that real quick. The Labyrinth. Where is it at? The Labyrinth. The Labyrinth. Where is it? Alright. Let's go, uh, since I'm so stupid. Where's the wild plains? There it is. Okay. So it should be... Should be right here. Where's the labyrinth, dude? There it is. I'm an idiot. It's not the labyrinth? Hold on. What is this week? 
Wild Plains, right? Oh, it is the Labyrinth. Okay. Stupid idiot. All right, so let's see. I'm on level 500. I got 2,500 renown. I'm totally done with this one, so you can believe me when I say that Triple Ferocity Rage Reaver definitely works. Shaman class, double red brown minus, uh, what is that? Purple. Double red brown minus purple. Works the whole way. I'm on 500 with 2,500 renown. If you can't believe anybody, you can believe me. As you can see right here. All the way done with it. So that's what I would recommend this week. Rage Reavers in the Soul Forge. No excuse. Um, and you just did the Vault Event. So if you didn't have the red stones to fully trait Ferocity, no excuse there either. Should have done it during the Vault Event. Should have went after a stone you needed. Anyway. Wednesday we have the pet. The new pet for their anniversary. It's like their 7th or 8th year anniversary. So they made an Eclair Mimic Donut thing. Thursday, we have Shaman Class, so if you're going to level that Shaman Class up for your Triple Ferocity Rage Reaver team, there you go. It's not the greatest, it's very situational, it's only used for that one team, really. But hey, you could use it with Catchers too or something, not terrible. Um, and then this weekend, we have Raids. I remember that because I said it three or four times during the spoiler, so I'd remember. Raid, 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 Raid Spray, I, I you know, did one of those things, Mnemonic Device or whatever. And uh, I remembered, we got Raids this weekend with a new weapon. Um, and another pet on Saturday, Dragon Kitty, I'm pretty sure. So that's what's going on this week. Alrighty, let's go check out the campaign, then we're done for the day. What do they got going on? We found the newly named Leocorn, just as Tassarion predicted. Something strange was at work. Tassarion suggested we visit a shaman in the Wild Plains. That looks weird, Wild Plains. Shouldn't that be like a lowercase i? Just like on Plains? They did W L. What is that? Is that a capital I or another? I don't know. That's wrong, though. The Wild Plains named Storm Chaser, who might know something more. All right, Taurus Bane. That should be easy. Pest Control. We just got a bunch of Vault Keys. Red Recruits. Super easy. Um, what do you get for rewards? I get some Ritz in a book. You get a VIP key. I get uh, some more Ritz. And you get some Celestials and a pet. What kind of stat? More attack. Well, that'll help your uh, catchers, at least. Anyway, yeah, that's it for this week. Um, teams Tuesday, tomorrow. And live stream Wednesday. Um, last new account playthrough ever, probably. We'll just call it our PC account going forward. But maybe I'll do something special on Wednesday. Not sure, though. Don't hold me to it. But maybe we'll look at our kingdom level and power again. Um, just show, like, what you're doing after you get out of the the early game. I need to finish up a bunch, bunch of quests, though, before I can really say that. But that's going to take a while. We had the vault this past weekend, so I'm not doing my new account. I, had to, I really had to work on this account this weekend, so I didn't do much on my new account over the weekend. So maybe it's not the last one, but it's one of the last uh, new account playthrough uh, live streams. So... Check it out Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. EST. Thursday is Sekiro, 10 a.m. EST. You get MVP points if you come to that. And uh, just chat and hang out for a little bit. I'll give you an MVP point for coming to Sekiro on Thursday at 10 a.m. EST. Um, Friday, we got uh, raids um, live stream. I think, man, I think I have an appointment this Friday, so I might have to move it to Saturday. But hey, if I don't do it Friday, I'll do it Saturday. No big deal. Um, and what else? You know, EverQuest at some point, another Sekiro, probably before the live stream, maybe today. And yeah, Saturday, a guide or list video if I don't do that live stream. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. Let's get to 5k, man. Just need like 20 people. Like 20 of you out there can make an account for your dog and get me to 5k. Yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Um, comment below. I might give out some MVPS, MV. S points for that if you comment consistently and I'll be asking questions in certain videos I'm not gonna do it every single video but if you listen carefully I will ask questions and give you points for the MVS the most most valuable center of the month uh, stuff I'm keeping track of my whiteboard don't worry um, but yeah see y'all tomorrow for teams Tuesday do all the things thank you so much you're the best love you so much peace